All right, bro, you ready for the match? Uh, yeah, but I still don't know who we're actually playing. Don't worry about that, G. It's a classic. We're ultras. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. I said, are you ready? Yeah, bro, come on. <laughs> What an atmosphere, am I right? I mean, yeah, but it's not even FC24, bro. That's FIFA 18 on Xbox 360. Why are you not RBLB power shotting it there, you prick? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Yo guys, it is your boy Niren here, and you're watching FTW. This, of course, the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. What's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, we had a jam-packed Misfits card where Tommy Fury beat KSI on points in a controversial result. These must have been the people that actually decided the fight. One judge was definitely playing Candy Crush instead of watching. Tommy was under pressure here because John Fury's putting him up for adoption if he loses. I'm knocking him out. Molly May's speaking out if he's defeated. But you still live separately. We live separately. But in the end, there were no winners, truly. Not a great fight. Honestly, Tommy's next opponent is Danny Aaron's. The small Don, illuminated by Jesus himself in the background, was doing the most. Meanwhile, Dylan Dennis threw more onto Twitter than in the ring. And my dodgy fire stick will be getting the call up when the next pay-per-view is £45. Now, onto the football and in an international week with friendlies in it. Oh! Italy were making the headlines for betting. Damn it, damn it, maybe shit. The event has Fioli betting scandal I mentioned last week has exploded into life this time as other Italian stars such as Sandro Tonali have been added into the mix. The Newcastle midfielder also betted on matches including Milan whilst at the club and introduced Fioli to the app. Look listen he just wanted that sweet app referral bonus. These lot have got a Poker Stars membership card. Oh man nice to see you. How was your international break Sandro? I mean I was getting up in the morning betting on you know the top of my Lithuanian under 20 basketball matches. Imagine Newcastle fans seeing this from the Italian. They spent the GDP of Greg's and now he might be suspended for a year. Why am I paying the wages for this piece of shit? The cast of Geordie Shaw will be over in Italy trying to back him. Imagine he betted on Milan versus Newcastle. He probably betted on Milan the way they played that day. It's not looking good here, by the way. A yellow card is potentially being investigated as he was booked for time wasting whilst 5 1 up in the 90th minute about to be substituted. He was quoted as saying that he's struggling with a gambling addiction and trying to help himself. And no wonder I'm spotting him in a casino. He's out playing blackjack with with three 58-year-old Geordies for £6.49 and a pint of Stella. An interesting rhetoric from the media here. Struggling with addiction versus Ivan Tony. Hey, look, listen, Sandro's PR definitely coming into play here. Realistically, him and Tony are fighting for the bet Fred Orr at the moment. Lucas Paqueta will be delighted when Tonali suggests a casino trip. Meanwhile, Juventus' Fioli is snitching on all of them, bringing to light multiple other players in the Italian fold who have been involved and was apparently threatened for owing so much money and being in so much debt. The Italian gangsters clearly aren't too pleased with him. Told you already, mate. Don't ever push me. Never push the mafia boss. And honestly, if he carries on grassing people up, he's going to get rushed at Juve training. It leaves some of the best Italian talent at their disposal facing bans, but Italy are trying to ban themselves from Euro 2024 in solidarity after losing 3-1 to England in a game that ensured the Three Lions qualification. I am resisting the urge to say we're winning the Euros, World Cup, Papa John's Trophy and PGA Tour. Oh, Before the game though and there was a rousing speech from Gianluigi Buffon saying we are Italy and we are blue <laughs> only for them to lose anyway <laughs> truthfully these look were the least threatening lasagna Wembley seen since Covid times in the second half but in the first half and we were in real trouble as Scamacha gave the Italians the lead despite actively attempting to miss Gareth Southgate was on boring form again I just know that he buys grey shirts for formal dinners gets ready sorted crisps with his three pound meal deal collect stamps it's out of control in the end though there was only one answer oh go on go get jude star boy jude bellingham was trying to distract italy's number one yeah yeah give me a high five jean luigi donnarumma shut up you don't have to say my full name all right jean luigi donnarumma jude won the penalty for the equalizer then went down extremely easily having suffered from la ligafication and then afterwards set up marcus rashford strike poor udogi's had a good season for tottenham but got rinsed here and was left up set after being substituted off. 75, 15 more minutes, 90 minutes, it's over, bro. Yeah, you got time. No, bro. Believe. I'm ass. Believe. I'm ass. You're not ass. I'm ass, bro. 
Calvin Phillips got away with one after a poor VAR decision and having actually got some game time was ready to head back to Manchester City headquarters and give Pep Guardiola his showreel for the season. Actually, I'm glad we've got this opportunity to chat as there's a couple things I want Shut to... Shut up. Sure. Once again, Jude was the difference here. Gianfranco Zola was in awe of him at such a young age, saying that at 20 he was getting breastfed instead of slapping it for Real Madrid. Honestly, at his height, he could probably still get it breastfed now. Meanwhile, England stars went out and celebrated afterwards, racking up a huge bar tab, 87% of which was Jack Grealish. Chat about flow, tell a fella come see me. It was a solid international break, although not perfect for England, as it took a second half Ollie Watkins goal to beat Australia in a friendly. The Aussie players were feeling reckless when told they didn't need cricket bats for this match for England. Do you think it's going to look good on the news carrying on like a total? I don't give a f Meanwhile, James Madison brought out a truly, truly special strike. Absolutely stunning! Ah, uh, look, at least he saw the funny side of it, posting this on his TikTok. <laughs> After his recent beef on Instagram with a Tottenham star, Trent Alexander-Arnold has a firm answer when asked if he's going to pass to James. Meanwhile, Madison's also in for hostility when he sees Australian boss Ange Postacoglu on the training ground. And elsewhere, Maguire was also the victim of violence. <laughs> Now a goal for England, look, we've seen plenty of those recently, but for other nations, and a goal is a bit more precious. Go, 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 go. scored their first competitive goal in 773 days and were even drawing versus a Denmark side that featured Christian Eriksen, Pierre Hoybier and Rasmus Hoyland. Their Twitter admin couldn't contain his excitement, it's fair to say. Then again, their Twitter admin's probably quite easily pleased at this point, celebrating wildly seeing his centre-back win an aerial duel. He's currently at a 6% win rate and even more gas when they finally secure a draw versus Lithuania's under-12s. The actual FA posted a screenshot of them watching it on TV. Their goalkeeper will be telling his wife tonight that he only conceded two goals and they'll be on the drinks till the early morning in a &E after all of the alcohol. Right, we just need to conduct some blood tests. Is that okay? I uh, don't know, Doc. I'm a little bit scared of him. Why is that? Well, I've never got a result before. Yeah, all right, well, I see. Yep, you're San Marino. I see what you've done there. It was a truly sensational occasion for the European minnows, and I am very, very happy for them. One better, though, isn't exactly pleased after missing out on a pretty huge amount of money based on this goal. Uh, someone take Sandro Tonali's phone away from him. Meanwhile, Rasmus Hoyland shushed the San Marinese defenders after hearing them speaking Italian, saying that they were going to target him. Well done, it's San Marino. You've shushed a cleaner at a cinema. He wasn't going to say anything anyway. What a day, though, for San Marino. Absolutely brilliant scenes. I I do hope they get that magical draw soon. But over in Brazil, and it's much more somber times. Let's be honest, Neymar has featured a lot in FTW history, but it's rarely been as serious as this, as the Brazil top scorer suffered an ACL tear and meniscus injury that keeps him out for nine months. It's a rough setback at his age for a player plagued by injuries anyway, and this Al Nasser graphic to commemorate it is an interesting choice. This meniscus rupture is brought to you by Oh god, my knee! Fuck it! Now, Nate, I can hear you're very vocal here, but have you heard of a company called NordVPN? Fuck off and treat my ACL! I mean, look, he's still in his early 30s, but this is a big injury to get, and especially after playing as much football as he has. I mean, he's been playing regular, regular football, 40 or 50 games a season since the age of 16. He's gonna burn out much earlier, like we saw with Eden Hazard recently, and of course, he's the most fouled player in recent footballing history and that'll have already taken its toll on his body. It was doubly painful for Brazil as they lost the match to Uruguay 2-0. Oh, a, a poor World Cup qualifying campaign which sees them level with Venezuela at the moment. Meanwhile, not so bad news for Uruguay Ultras. We'll have a new tune to sing on the bus home. Darwin, Darwin. Now, Manchester United were interested in signing Neymar in the summer. Then again, they were also interested in selling the club, but that's not happening either, as the Qatari shape that wanted to buy the club from the Glazers has walked away from the deal. Imagine Norwich scarf owners seeing this news. Now, the reason for this is that the asking price was too high and it changed over time. The Glazers put a shake in arrears. How do you even do that? If a don from Qatar won't buy your product, it's too expensive. What was even going on in the negotiations? Right, give me Qatar and you can have the club. How the fuck? Does that even make sense? I can't even do that anyway. Right, lads, let's just calm it down. Have you thought about giving the money to the children instead? Not now, Marcus. What was the market value that the Glazers were quoting? Over a billion, 200, a trillion, 200 billion. Sheikh Jazim could rebuild Manchester out of diamonds and the asking price is still too high. Ironically, United fans want to shake the Glazers till he has a violent back muscle injury. Now back on international duty and Scotland qualified for the Euros. Scott McTominay's record is something to behold, by the way. 
the way. Six goals in qualifying. Just Scotland, please do something this time. Do you know what I'm saying? I want to see the streets of Glasgow in a Euros quarterfinals. Drunk dons everywhere. Alcohol consumption at 9am to settle the nerves. A random old man pissing in the street. So a normal Glasgow day. Scottish fans are already preparing to sing the national anthem when they play Albania next summer. Meanwhile, with McTominay's goal scoring form, Shea Adams is trying to impress Scotland's manager and get back into the team. Now, Portugal, Belgium and France have also recently qualified for the tournament. But there was drama of a different kind when Belgium faced off against Sweden in the week. The game was officially abandoned at half-time after two people were shot dead in Brussels before kick-off. Now, the gunman was still at large at the time, so definitely the right decision to keep fans and the players in the stadium. But honestly, just a true tragedy. Fans should never be going to a game and not make it home. And my thoughts do go out to their families at what can only be an impossibly difficult time. Now I mentioned that Portugal have also qualified and that is through the help of Cristiano Ronaldo's incredible year-long goals tally. He's doing an unreal job for Portugal though these goals have been inflated by scoring against Saudi milkmen to be fair and Diogo Dallo's still trying to humble him on Instagram complaining about this generation always being on their phones. Ron also seemed to be a magnet for pitch invaders this week the first of which almost injured him stepping on his foot before being rushed away by his stewards. The second however didn't manage to sprain his ankle and even filmed it. How did he get on the pitch this calmly whilst fucking live streaming it? And for the Netherlands, Virgil van Dijk scored a last minute penalty, keeping it cool despite having lasers pointed in his eyes. He said no though to having a one love armband this week. An interesting choice which seems to be made for pretty much no reason by Virg. But either way, the Saudi Pro League will be excited seeing this. Mashallah, brother! And Jordan Henderson will be realising he can get that green chem link up with his former teammate out there. But won't be impressed when he sees those on social media complaining about his Dutch former teammate. Don't be ashamed of yourselves. You political bastard. Turkey were celebrating after also qualifying for Euro 2024. Are they dark horses again? But they'll need to work on their chemistry when starting a counter attack. And clearly they're shooting as well after one strike assaulted a steward and another one from Hakan Chalyanolu ended up in a different solar system. Fucking Thomas Muller isn't letting football distract him from a budding TikTok career. The Champions League. Champions League. Over in Argentina and Rodrigo de Paul is getting in his feelings, realising he's been replaced as Lionel Messi's bodyguard by Christian Romero. Things aren't going to be pretty when he catches Christian at a bus stop outside the stadium. And honestly, Rodrigo, if you need to talk to someone, that's absolutely okay. I can't believe that he would he would cheat on me like this. I remember our wedding day like it was yesterday. Sir, you're not even married. To anybody for that matter, let alone Lionel Messi. Argentina beat Peru thanks to goals from Leo, and even Peruvian fans wanted him to succeed. You might mentioned Ronaldo pitch invaders, we got one in Argentina as a young kid sprinted over the advertising board, dropped the shoulder and managed to get a picture. I don't know about you, but someone needs to sign him up ASAP with that agility. Meanwhile, over in Asia and Hung Min Son, South Korea beat Vietnam 6-0 this week. But a Vietnamese player still wanted to get a memento to remember the occasion and so asked the Tottenham star to sign a Spurs shirt that they had. Very wholesome that Son would agree to do it, but then again, he's a wholesome man. Georgia beat Thailand in a massive scoreline 8-0 here in the Scrabble Derby. Some of the names in this match will have been looking like a reference number. What the hell is even that? Right, Kavicha, look, we've got a free kick here. I need you to mark yeah, you know what? <laughs> Never mind. We'll go zonal, lads. Japan are currently on an incredible run of form. Maybe one of the most underrated teams in the world right now, putting together insane performances. They had some wavy extra coach who just turned up and decided to try and manage from the stands. Meanwhile, star Ritsu Doan was unfortunately missing from one of their games with toothache. Now, look, don't get it twisted. Toothache is, is a serious issue. But do you think Roy Keane's letting that slide in his era? Play the game. Now, on the theme of Japan and one of their stars, of course, at the moment is Kaoru Matoma, who's once again won Player of the Month for Brighton. And with that comes a new Porsche, his second. I mean, honestly, he's going to be filling up the car park soon. He might as well own the local dealership. Alex Iwobi stunned the world of Twitter as footage of him rapping materialised this week. Diamonds dancing, wrists so wet, I've got them tempted to touch. I make her temple run as she calls me a little candy crush, screaming on na na. But let me show you what I'ma do. Senses spot some glasses, especially when I pick. Oh, let me go again. Here we have Fulham fans trying to learn the bars midweek. First of all, we've got 
Pussio, you're a pussio. Get away. His West London side teammate Harry Wilson will be impressed when it comes over the Bluetooth speaker in the dressing room. Oh, oh, and look, listen, I respect his mates gassing him up in the background, but for what, guys? Come on, I'm not gonna lie. Remember Tide, the, the rapper that claimed he was a footballer? It's not Iwobi, me. I'm telling you that. And Amadou Anana was not too impressed hearing that Iwobi verse after he dropped the most angelic R&B vote since 2004, Usher. For the day date chocolate face, I'm out for the brunch. Footballer fits, I'm local, trust me, the fits are coming. Rhys James is back on grass, back in training, but let's be honest, this is only gonna last so long. And coming on, your number 24, Rhys James. He's fucking down. Lads, he's, ah, someone get the stretcher again, fuck it. We all know what's gonna kick off after his first high intensity sprint of the weekend. Over 45 minutes of Rhys James in the Premier League in 2023. Who says no? Over on Sky and Gary Neville was getting rinsed for his new off-white shirt. I'm, I'm looking. <laughs> I, I'm look, it's a bit of product placement. And speaking of Gary Neville, he is going to be on Dragon's Den for the new season. We do love to see it for Gary. I'm not going to lie, there might be a cheat code here, and that's just bringing football ideas to the table. Right, so talk to me. What is, what's your idea you're bringing to the Dragons today? Well, basically, mate, uh, obviously we protect our legs uh, with shin pads. I thought it'd be a good idea to have a shin pad on your knee. You subscribe to them, so you get them sent to you like every week. I call them sort of like mini incomes. I don't think he's going to have much time for me when I go onto the show trying to sell a football boot that can also connect to 5G internet. The official Europa League Twitter account tweeted out a guess who. Guess who this is? Oh, fuck it. That, that might be Yaya Torre, mate. But can the Europa League please stop tweeting about us? Now that it's time for your goals of the week. And we start off in Jordan of all places and at Al Naima, where we've got a beautiful first time flick and then bicycle kick all in one motion into the back of the net. True technique here. None of that fancy stuff over in Chile and at Huachipa with actually one of the most satisfying halfway line goals we've seen. That is truly to perfection. But finally, a bit more of a high profile name now, where Mikhailo Mudrik scored a beautiful solo goal, striking it from well outside of the area. Now he's just got to do this for Chelsea, mate. Now, over in France, and there's some pretty critical news coming out of there, where Ligue 1 and Ligue 2, respectively, are yet to receive any bids for their upcoming TV rights deal. These lot are going to end up on Kerrang, bro. Their one Kylian Mbappe move to Real Madrid away from having to draw the highlights from memory. Obviously, with no TV deal comes no TV money, and teams like Twa and Angers, they're going to be surviving on croissant sales alone. This is actually catastrophic news for French football, a league that's already struggling for money outside of PSG. Imagine the riots, honestly. Someone bid just for the crowd entertainment, if anything. Meanwhile, we realise where Kylian Mbappe gets his footballing skill from this week, as his dad sat down a goalkeeper in humiliating fashion in a charity match. Now, now, slightly more serious news, and our OGC niece, Yusuf Atal, has been suspended from club activity after speaking out about the treatment of Palestinians in the Middle East. This also happened to Anwar El Ghazi, who'd signed for Mines just two weeks ago before speaking out on social media and being banned by his Bundesliga club. Though, to be fair, he used the term from river to sea in his post, and apparently that's banned in Germany. So that might have been the reason. But either way, it's interesting that politics is only allowed in football when the powerful people agree with whatever the message because truthfully, you know, we championed Alexander Zinchenko speaking out about Ukraine quite rightfully a year ago. But then when players talk about this topic, talk out about innocent Palestinians that are being killed across the region of Gaza, players aren't allowed to speak about those innocent civilians, those innocent children living in the area. But elsewhere in the Bundesliga, and Hamburg provided probably the most satisfying group picture that's ever happened in the world of football. Now over in Spain, apparently Real Madrid sent scouts to watch Job Bellingham play for Sunderland this week. Listen, if they end up signing both of them, I swear to God, Joe Bellingham scoring his first goal for RM Castilla and bringing out a familiar celebration. Carlo Angelotti's gonna be at the birth of their next child at this point. So speaking of Carlo, and I do feel bad for him, the guy has to go to Sunderland. From beating Catalans to leaving Matalan, what a fall from grace. At Rayo Valladolid and Espanyol, and their players brought out dogs before kickoff that needed rehoming in the local area. A lovely gesture, and a scheme that will hopefully get K9's new homes. Another brilliant gesture came from Levante, who wore a special shirt for breast cancer awareness. Meanwhile, over in Italy, and there was a spat between former teammates Mario Balotelli and Zlatan Ibrahimovic, when Zlatan claimed that Mario Balotelli had, in effect, wasted his career, given the talent 
talent that he had. Mario himself replied with a picture of him winning the Champions League, a competition that Zlatan never managed to win. It's a shithousery award for Balotelli, even though Zlatan's right, truthfully. Hello all, and welcome to the beautiful game, the segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> And that concludes the beautiful game. Now, over in Asian World Cup qualifying, and Guam became the first team to be eliminated from the 2026 World Cup after losing to Singapore 1 0. Imagine being eliminated from the 2026 World Cup in 2023. Joining them, the likes of the Maldives, Cambodia, Mongolia, and Bhutan, but also Brunei after they lost 12 0 on aggregate to Indonesia. This is what happens when you don't call up the box and fight bulk here, I'm telling you now. One Costa Rica player decided that he didn't want to play football and instead was going to give a strict team this week. You're gonna have to pay me if you want that service next time. Hey, yo, no, I didn't. No, 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 I, I didn't want to. Timor Lest, I think I'm saying that that country right. A, a small Asian nation haven't quite nailed the art of defending a set piece yet. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Meanwhile, there were beautiful scenes in a World Cup qualifier for Pakistan, whose footballing heritage and footballing record is not very good to say the least. They won their first World Cup qualifier in about 35 attempts recently, thanks to Haroon Hamid. He was the hero here, scoring the only goal of the game. After their under 19s actually performed pretty well in a recent tournament, so they might be reaching a golden generation. Maybe a new side to watch out for when it comes to Asian international football. Now over in the Serbian Cup, and we've got probably the best own goal of the week here. That goalkeeper's gonna want a strong drink after conceding like that. But elsewhere, and we've got a goalkeeper having a strong cigarette and still managing to make saves. This man's kept a clean sheet smoking a pack of Marlboro Reds, and Andrea Nana can't even keep a clean sheet. In Uruguay and at Peñarol, we've got a forward here who's clearly been stepped on in the process of being injured but he's never too injured to not make another defender. Next up though here at FTW and we've got a big, big penalty. Big, big because it's, I mean, it's been taken by an elephant. You can't, it can't really get much bigger than that to be honest with you. Solid strike to be honest with you. Maybe the future is elephant football. Though probably not fair when you realise it could place the ball in the back of the net from 18 yards with its own trunk. And on the topic of penalties, I'm assuming this is some kind of charity match. We've got a pass penalty to a goalkeeper who, look, he's just far too unselfish. Just put the ball in the back of the net, mate. At Welsh side, both United and they were forced to postpone a game this week after a massively waterlogged pitch and that called for them swapping their football boots for a pair of flippers. Game on boys. Meanwhile at Dorking and their manager Mark White was not holding back in their post-match interview. They deserve to be, uh, fully deserve to be in the draw and hopefully, I really hope, uh, they get something amazing that's life-changing so my fucking shit players can learn a fucking lesson. Now though for the moment you've all been waiting for because over in Romania, Romania this week has been a little bit more sporadic recently. The, the country's kind of calming down in a football sense, but not down in their fifth tier, where there was a beautiful picture of a football match that involved two generations. There was a 47 year old playing in this one and a 14 year old making his debut. These two get free meals for entirely different reasons. Over in Uruguay and the footballing ability in this episode is reaching an all time peak with a defensive howler and striker that's just as incompetent. At South Shields and the incompetence happened a lot earlier there though, as they won a penalty eight seconds into a match they were playing, which also saw an opponent sent off. I mean, you might as well go home at that point. In the FA Cup, an Altrincham might want to set up their cameras slightly differently next time, as an open window got in the way of a shot over there. A goalkeeper by the name of Nuno, I bet apparently he's having his debut here. It might also be his last game for the club, given this shocking error. Yes, in Brazil and in an under-17s league match, it's the ball boy who's the star of the show. I mean, first of all, the ball boy's older than the actual players out on the pitch here. He's trying to get a trial. Meanwhile, staying in Brazil and in Sao Paulo, Portuguesa Santista won the Copa Paulista thanks to a truly special goalkeeping howler in the 93rd minute. Things are slightly less tight over in the Norwegian third division, where Bayarzen won 17-0 versus Kolstad. And staying in Norway, there's a beautiful story developing where KFUM Oslo are close to being promoted to the top flight of Norwegian football. The reason this is a crazy story is because their entire team, pretty much, is Norwegian, and they're also the sports branch of a local YMCA in Oslo. Imagine YMCA London playing in the Prem. 
Now there is time for still nil nil and you guys know the story by now. This is a segment of the show where I bring to the best of Sunday League and amateur football. Now, sometimes when there's not enough officials, somebody who's not playing, one of the players or coaches, has got to step in on linesman duty. Often this can cause some problems, but not quite as many as blatant as this one. Never before have I seen a referee have to yellow card a lino. He's going to be on the receiving end of a challenge when the opposition coach double foots him as he's running by. On to the weird stuff though now. Now, first of all, in Thailand, who've been facing a few European teams on the international stage this week, had a long and difficult journey between Georgia and Estonia. And after losing 8-0, the least you want in disappointing times is a meal of some kind. Well, despite travelling for 24 hours, their FA didn't provide them any sort of food. I don't know whether it was as a punishment or not. So as a result they had to go out and get their own and were pictured in McDonald's. Not the usual diet preparation to be honest in modern football. At FC Horsham and they have a unique man of the match award where Tom Richard managed to win himself an orbital sander for being the best player. And finally there was concerning news coming out of IFK Nor Kerping over the last two weeks after a loanee by the name of Emil Roback had gone missing. Now he just just hadn't turned up for training, hadn't turned up to the ground, and hadn't been heard from from his loan or parent club for 14 days. The 20-year-old has though now reappeared and shown up at the team's training ground. His disappearance prompted the director of Norkerping to make a public appeal, hoping to see the Milan Loney return to the club. And thankfully, it seems to have worked, though it's still apparently unclear what Roback's been doing over the last two weeks and why he didn't keep contact with his family or the club. I mean, there's ghosting out on the pitch and then there's this. That though is going to wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have then feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.